For some reason, all of my favorite blogs that I visit on a regular basis have this. Here's one of them, Backlinko, and I'm looking at this very long in-depth article, and when I scroll down, there is this nice table of contents listed right here where I can easily scan and jump to any part of this very long article that I want to. See, if I wanna see their yearly guides, there I go, and I'm right on that bit in this article. Here's another in-depth article where we see a table of contents here in the left. Here's one of my favorite SEO blogs and that's the Rank Math blog and when I'm on here and I scroll down, they have this beautiful table of contents right here. Here's another hugely popular blog, the HubSpot blog and when I scroll down, guess what? They have it right here and it's integrated into the content. And lastly, maybe not the most popular blog, it's my website and you can see right here when you scroll down, I have this table of contents and I actually have it stick to the top as someone's scrolls through the content. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily add this to your WordPress website. There's multiple ways you're going to be able to do it. It's not going to cost you anything to add this to your website and you can get the same results and the same flexibility very easily. Now, before I get started, why do you think all of these blogs that get massive amounts of traffic have a table of contents inside of their blog posts? I mean, they must be adding them for a reason. And yes, of course they are. The goal of a blog is to get people that visit your blog post to stay on your blog post, make it very easy, easy to skim through all of the details of the blog post. You wanna keep people on your blog. And that is what adding a table of contents is going to do for you. It's going to keep people on that blog post longer. It's going to make it easier to digest the content, find what they want, jump all around and consume the blog post the way that they want to consume your blog post. So let's go through adding this to your website. Before I show you the way that pretty much most people are going to want to add this, and it also happens to be the free way that I'm talking about, there is an alternative. I just have to mention it and it's Elementor or specifically if you use Elementor Pro, they have a table of contents element that you can add. So depending on how you built your website, you might want to go the Elementor Pro route. Let me just take a moment to show you how to do this. And if you don't wanna go this route, there's a table of contents in the video description and you can skip this part. So I've created a new page and I'm gonna go and quickly edit it with Elementor. Once you're in the editor where it says search widget, you can type TOC, which pretty much means table of contents. You can see it's right here, drag and drop, and it picks up the content on the page. There's obviously no content on the page. I really just wanted to make you aware that this exists. And so you have your options here and you have your style options here. So what you would end up doing is if you do use Elementor Pro and you use it to create your blog post templates, you might want to integrate integrate this into your design. It's a natural fit if you use Elementor Pro, but not all of us use Elementor Pro. Here I am on a normal blog post also on this site. And what I did to make this easy is I went right here to the backlinko post that I showed you in the beginning of this video. And I simply highlighted, copied and pasted everything into this blog post. So we're gonna essentially recreate what you see here. Obviously there's lots of styling options, but we're going to try to recreate this right here inside of our websites. Now, the first thing and the only thing you're going to need is a block package that includes this table of contents block. And it is the best block package that I have used. And it also happens to be the most popular one. So, and it's also going to be free. So all you have to do on your website is go to plugins, click on add new, and then search for the plugin Cadence Blocks. It's going to be the first result right here. So you'll want to click on install and activate. Now I have tried all of the table of contents blocks that I've come across, and there's a reason I'm recommending the Cadence one, and it has to do with dynamic content. So I'll be showing you that in a moment. So here is that blog post that I copied and pasted, and here here is what came over from the copy and paste. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna click the enter key. I'll do a slash and I'm gonna type table 
uh, there it is. It's the third option, Table of Contents, and I'm gonna click on Enter. And already, it looks very similar. So let me go ahead and click on this, and I'm going to remove that block. So this is all dynamically created for you. The way the block works is it searches for headings in your blog post, and you have control over all of that. It searches for these headings, and it automatically generates this table of contents. So if you change the name of one of your headings, it would dynamically change right here. And if you added some new sections and headings, it would automatically update it right here. Now, these numbers are actually part of the heading. So if you see right here, here's a heading and there's the number and then the heading. If I wanted to not use a number, I could just go like that and you can see it's dynamically linked up here and it's gone right here. So now let's look at some of the styling options of this because we have a lot of them. So first we can choose which headings we want to pick up and have automatically added to this table of contents. And we have those all listed out right here. I think I'm actually getting a little ahead of myself. We have these options right here for the overall layout. And this is probably what you wanna look at first. So this is to have everything in one column, but if I want it, I can have it in two columns or even three columns columns. So since I'm going to be copying Backlinko, I'm going to go with one column right here. And then we have the option of bullet points, numbers, or nothing. So we have bullet points. This would be numbers. Now you see this duplication of numbers, like I said, because the number is actually added to the heading. And right here is no numbers. It's just the headings, just the straight up headings. So let's go with this because we're wanting to have it look like this right here. Okay, so the original version didn't have a heading, this heading right here. So here are the options of the block. I'll click on title settings and it says right here, enable title. I can just toggle the title off if I didn't want it. Or if you wanted to actually change what the title says, you can click in here and start customizing the title to say anything that you wanted to say. I'm gonna turn it off because we're copying uh, the style that we find on that other blog. Next, we have our link settings right here. So this is where you can control the color of the link, uh, whether it, the normal way it looks or the hover. And we can also choose the link style. So it's by default gonna choose underline. I prefer actually underline on hover. So now my underline's gone and now it's just underline on hover. And so the only other difference was the alignment. You can see this right here is where paragraphs start. When I hover over the box, there it is. You can see there's a bit of padding. Let me show you where you can get rid of that padding if you want. So that is going to be right here under the container settings. And you can see right there, it says container padding. So if I don't want any container padding, I can just take that away and it just goes right off to the edge. There you have it. Now there's other settings if you wanted to have it be in a box with a different colored background, maybe add some box shadow to it. These options are all available here. I'm emulating that style where it just looks natively integrated with your content. So now I'm gonna click on update and then let's click right here to view the post and see what it looks like. And as I scroll down, there it is. When I hover over, it's all auto-generated. Now, when I click on one of these, it's gonna take me straight to that piece of content in the post. So I'll click right there. And then here I am, I'm right at that point in the content. So that's the basics of how the table of contents block works. But let's do some special stuff with it. Remember I said I've tested them all and this one is the best and I'll tell you why. Well, let me tell you why right now. You can use this depending on the theme that you have and it's usually gonna be a feature found in a pro theme and a lot of people have a pro theme. Just let me show you. But you can use this and dynamically insert it inside of of your blog posts and you can even filter if you only wanted to be certain blog posts in a certain category you can do that as well this is the only table of contents block that i've come across that can be used dynamically like this let me show you what I'm talking about. Now on this website, I happen to be using the free cadence theme. And you can see right here, the cadence theme, which also happens to be when you go to wordpress.org and search for the popular themes, it also happens to be the most popular 
third party theme right now. You can see right here, it's at the top of the list because it's lightning quick. It has powerful features and it just so happens to be free. But don't worry if you're not using the cadence theme, this will work in any theme that has something called hooks or elements. They all name it a little different. So if you're pro theme and most pro themes have this, you're gonna be able to insert dynamically this table of contents widget. But I'm using Cadence and the pro version of their theme so that I could have these hooks or elements. Let me just quickly show you how to do it and you can follow these and adapt these instructions to the theme that you happen to be using. So I'm gonna click right here where it says Cadence and I need to enable the feature. Here are my pro features and what I want to enable is hooked elements right here. All I have to do is toggle it on and then when I do a refresh, I have this new option here that says elements. Let me go ahead and choose on this. Now I'm gonna click on add new and it's gonna give me a choice of element. I'm going to create a default element right here and I'll give it a name. There's my name and I'm gonna click right here and I'm going to add this table of contents block. The same way we did it in the blog post, I'll do a slash and start typing in table of contents. There it is, and here's my table of contents block. And I can go here and start styling it how I want to style it. And these would be using those same options that we just talked about a moment ago. So instead of adding this table of contents block manually to every blog post on my website, I can instead use this feature. So let me click right here to go into the settings. So what happens when you're using hooks or elements in this case, you create your piece of content. In this case, it's the table of contents block, and then you decide where you want it. So here is the placement options, and I'll go here, and I can choose from this nice list of options. So maybe I'm gonna choose um, the for the blog post, I'm probably gonna want this at the top of a blog post. So I'm gonna scroll to these options right here where it says content and sidebar, because that's gonna be the next thing we go over. So I want to insert this before the content in my blog posts. But then also what we're gonna do is for fun, we're gonna also try adding this before the sidebar. So you can automatically put this in a sidebar if you wanted. So I'm gonna choose before content right here. And then next I have to choose my display settings. So I want this to show on blog posts. So it's gonna be right here where it says single posts. And then right here it's all, but I can choose by category. So if I only want a table of contents and certain pieces of content, I can easily do that. And I can have exclusion rules right here. And then next is the user settings. I'm gonna want this to be visible to all users. Now for extra control, there's device settings. So if you didn't want to show this on mobile devices, you could choose desktop only if you wanted, but I'm gonna keep it to all. Next, we just need to click right here where it says publish and then click on publish again. And let's go ahead and take a look at that blog post. So here I am back on that blog post. I'll click right here and do a quick refresh and you can see the content was added. This table of contents was just added to the top of this blog post. In fact, it is now added to every single blog post on my website. But like I said, you could choose the categories that you want this to be automatically inserted on. This makes it so much easier to add to an existing blog as long as your theme that you're using has this hooks or elements feature. But you remember my website where I have it here on the sidebar and it kind of sticks like that? I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So here I am back on that element that I created and you could see my placement. We're gonna just play around with the placement option. Now, I think before I had it in the wrong placement. So if you want it in the blog post above the content that you see right here, the correct place to put it is before entry content. But it's okay because you can experiment with these. You can just change it to whatever you want to change it to for testing purposes. So for me, I want to go before sidebar. I think I'm going to give this one a shot, this before sidebar option. I think I might need to put a background color on it, but I'm going to just go with this for now. So let's choose before sidebar. Let's go ahead and click on update. Now what's going to happen is 
is you can see on this blog post, I don't have the sidebar enabled, which is very simple to change. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on customize and let's just change this blog post style to add a sidebar. And then I'm gonna show you how you can make it sticky. So for this, it's gonna be under blog posts and every theme is gonna be different. A uh, single post layout here, here's my layout. Uh, but when I scroll down, there it is, one of these sidebar options. So this would be sidebar on the left or on the right. So let's put that up and there it is. There is my table of contents. You can see it's inserted. I'd wanna remove that padding, maybe add a background color, but you can do whatever you want. So uh, there we go, we have that, but there's another option down here called sticky sidebar. Actually, it's not here. Let me go back and I believe this is under general and then sidebar and there it is, enable sticky sidebar. So that should make it stick when I scroll. Let's see, there we go and it's sticking. The reason we're having uh, this is because it's a very long table of contents. So in this case, you might want to have the sidebar uh, have less widgets in it. So let me just go ahead and fix that. So this looks good. So I'm gonna go to my widgets and it's sidebar here. I don't like uh, recent contents. I don't need recent posts and I don't need the search, but you can see I already just got rid of it. So. Let's go ahead and publish this and let's see what this looks like. So now you can see there's my table of contents and then it just sticks, it just perfectly sticks. Now this sticky sidebar feature is a feature in the free theme. Uh, it just comes with the cadence theme. There's lots of ways to get content to stick on scroll. So if you're not using this theme, uh, you can easily add stickiness to it. Now let me just leave you with one additional way to put this in your content. It's a little better than manual, but it's still a little bit on the manual side. So here is where I created that element. Let me back out. You can see where here it is created. There's a short code for manual placement. So I could manually place this wherever I want to place it inside of my content. So if you wanted to integrate it inside of your content, this is how you would do it. Now the advantage of doing it this way is you could come here, you can change your styling to however you want to style it and it will update everywhere that you put that short code in and you can change any of these visibility settings and it just changes and updates everywhere. So you can see this is very easy to add to your website and it comes at absolutely zero cost and you have future options with it because if you did get a pro theme in the future, you could dynamically insert it and it supports this kind of dynamic concept. And if you're an Elementor user, I know I glossed over it, but there's also a way for you to do it very quickly and easily as well. But for me, I don't like to create my blog posts using Elementor. I much more prefer creating my blog posts using the default block builder. So I hope you found some great value out of this. I do recommend adding it to your website and at least testing it and checking the analytics after you've had it on your blog post for a period of time, or maybe manually add it to a couple of your most popular blog posts and then look at the analytics and see if the time on the page has increased and the bounce rate has decreased. There's a video that I posted last week on adding a free service called Microsoft Clarity that records what people are doing on your website. So you also might want to add that to see if people are using the table of contents block on your website. And you might learn some things that people really like it and people will stay on your blog post for a longer period of time. Hey, I put a lot of effort into these tutorial videos. All I ask for you is to give this video a thumbs up. It'll just take you one second, one mouse click. If you can give this video a thumbs up, if you know someone that can benefit from it, maybe share it out with them. And if you like tutorials like this, subscribe to the channel. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.